Hey everyone, Clay from Clayviation.com. As a private pilot, I really like to use the flight simulator as a training device in my real world flying. But sometimes I like to take a little deviation and just have a little fun with a different airplane. And one thing I really want to do is to get my glider rating. So I really enjoy flying the gliders on the different flight simulators. Here in X-Plane 11 today we're going to go over some basics to help you enjoy some glider flights in the ASK-21 glider. First of all, we are here at Minden Tahoe Airport, which is K-M-E-N, sorry, K-M-E-V, in Nevada. And this is actually a real-world uh, center for flight training, glider training. So let's go over just a few things that are in the cockpit here, just the basics of how this is laid out. Um, you'll see some familiar instruments in our glider here, such as our airspeed indicator, which is calibrated to kilometers per hour, a little different than maybe you're used to with knots or miles per hour. So I've done some conversions um, to kind of get us uh, knowledgeable on some of the speeds with that, which we'll go over. Our altimeter, our standard altimeter here, you can see we're at 4,500 feet here at Minnetaho. There are also two variometers in this uh, particular glider, which a variometer you can think of um, as basically a vertical speed indicator. So when you are in sinking air, your variometer is going to show a descent. And when you're in climbing air, you're going to show a climb. Um, and you have two variometers here. Won't go into the differences in the total energy variometer and the non-electric variometer, but just know that those instruments are how you're going to tell if you're heading up or if you're in downward air. And there's going to be some audio we'll turn on so you can actually hear kind of ascending or descending beeps that help you hear um, if you're in rising or climbing air versus having to look down and actually see it. Lastly, we have our, um, our accelerometer. This shows us how many G's we're pulling, basically. One G is where we are in unaccelerated flight or standing still. So if we pull back on the stick, we're actually going to go up to positive G's here. And if we nose over on the stick, we would go down to negative G's over here. A couple other things that we have. Um, we have our spoilers, which is this handle just here on the left. Now, if we go to the outside of the airplane, we can actually see those spoilers come up and down. So they're by default configured to keys three and four. Four will actually extend them. You can see them extending from the top of the airplane. And basically that just is a um, little surface that goes out into the um, wind, to the relative air, and helps to spoil the lift and slow you down some. So, and then three retracts those. There are two different positions that you can actually set for those spoilers. One, two back, one, two forward. Um, we do have a little radio, so we'll go ahead and turn our uh, general power on here and our avionics switch on, and then we can turn on our comm radio, and then we can turn on our audio for our variometer, which is going to help to hear our lift. We're not going to have that on while we're climbing in the tow plane, but we'll turn it on once we get loft. Lastly, you can actually adjust the uh, the canopy. You can click on this little one of these little red bars here, these little red handles, and your canopy will open, which is kind of cool. A little kind of fun thing here. Your little guy's head actually moves his head when you adjust your flight controls, so you can kind of make him do a little dance here. It's kind of fun. Okay, getting off top topic. Let's get back to it. Let's close up our canopy. We have our tow plane in front of us eagerly awaiting our departure and we are going to go ahead and release the brakes to take off and start moving. So I'll show you a few things as we go here. Number one was our instrument and our uh, aircraft layout here. And uh, let's go ahead and get, before we go on, one more thing about the tow plane. Tow plane steering, if you go up to your settings, this is number two, how to steer your tow plane. If you just go to the search over here in the keyboard tab, search T-O-W for tow plane. How about that? This little section for glider comes up and you can see tow plane for gliders. There's take me left, take me right, take me straight. So you can actually control that air, that um, tow plane. I have mine set to some just previously unassigned keys that I tried, H, J, and U. You can set them to whatever you like. If you set it to a key that's already assigned, it will alert you of that so you don't duplicate those. And that is how we can steer our tow plane in the air. So now we'll go ahead and take off. We can release our brakes by pressing the B key, and we will begin. Um, we will begin our takeoff roll, going through our little dust storm here. 
We're going to use our rudder to keep us straight on the runway and our ailerons to keep our wings level. And we'll go ahead and take off here with the airplane. Now, it is challenging enough just to kind of keep this tow plane in front of you, you'll find. Um, perhaps if you're an experienced glider pilot, this would be child's play for you. Um, but for us learning the craft, uh, it's challenging enough just to keep this tow plane in front of you. Now, there are several different positions um, you can tow from, and this is considered, somewhere around here is considered a high tow, which is just above the prop wash of the airplane. If I were to get down right below the prop wash, I would be in a low tow. Um, I think for our purposes, as long as you can keep that thing out your window and in front of you, you'll be doing just fine. And this tow plane will tow you up as high as you want to go. Um, and you can see at the top it says space bar to release the tow rope. Once we press the space bar, that tow rope will be released and we will be flying on our own under our own energy without power. So we will tow up to whatever air, um, whatever altitude we would like. Now, we can actually go over a couple of air speeds, which is one thing I want to show you. Um, there are a couple different air speeds that are, that are marked on our air speed indicator here. If you look at this little yellow triangle here, the yellow triangle is actually showing us what our approach speed is. Um, then you've got your regular green arc, which is your normal speeds. Top of the green arc is your maneuvering speed. So once you get into yellow, you want to proceed with caution. Uh, no abrupt maneuver maneuvers. And then this red line is your never exceed speed. That's what you want, don't want to ever go over. Now, once we're under our own power, all we're going to have to basically control the airplane um, is our airspeed. We don't have power to adjust our speed. So we're we can nose over to pick up more speed or pull back to lose airspeed, and that's basically how we control our energy. Now, there are two speeds that we want to know. One of those is our minimum sink, and that's basically just below this yellow triangle. The minimum sink is going to be the least amount of altitude lost per unit of time. So if we want to stay aloft longer, we're going to use our minimum sink. Primarily, that's good for once we get into a thermal. We go to our minimum sink speed, and we can climb and circle around in a thermal. Um, the other speed is our max LD speed, which is basically our best glide speed. It's, um, it's our lift to drag ratio, and that's going to get us the furthest uh, distance per altitude lost. So those are a couple speeds that they do change based on the weight of the airplane, and if you have one passenger, two passengers, things like that. So just know that just above the triangle is going to be our max LD, just below the triangle is going to be our minimum sink. Now, you can see now that we've gotten up a little bit that we've actually got some lift going on and we've got some thermals that we're hitting and you can set the thermals in x-plane so let's do something here let's go ahead and release our tow rope now when you break from the tow plane you're supposed to cut 90 degrees to the right to both get out of his way and to clear your area so we'll go ahead and cut here we were a little low on that tow anyways we'll let the nose fall over just a bit We'll start to pick up a little bit of airspeed, and we can actually trim our airplane out to the airspeed that we want to fly. So we can kind of get that to where we want. Now, we'll just be just a little high of that triangle if we want to try to get the most, um, the most distance for our altitude lost. So we can just kind of pull that nose back and let that airspeed come down and then find a good place on the horizon where that works, and we can trim our nose out to that. Okay, so thermals. I'm going to pause this for just a moment. We can set our thermals in X-Plane. If you go over to the flight configuration, little airplane up top here, you can actually go to your weather tab and hit customize. Now, this little thermal tab over to the right, you can actually set your altitude, coverage, and climb rate. You can see I have my altitude for thermal set at 1,000 feet AGL, above ground level. So, Minden Tahoe Airport's 4,500 is where we took off, so that means that once we're above about 5,500, we should start seeing some thermals, and that's about what happened. We started to see some bumps when we got up being pulled behind that tow plane. You can select what kind of coverage you have with those thermals, so from 0% all the way to 25% is the highest you can go with coverage, and then you can select the climb rate that those thermals produce as well. Th thermals and the aerodynamics of those 
that's a whole another topic that's a huge can of worms for today just know that we're going to apply the changes we're going to fly around and if we were to experience some lift we would know it by turning on our variometer we could watch it here but you can hear it really well if you were to experience some lift so we can glide around we can kind of see if we hit any of that now there's um, what they call blue thermals, which is thermals that are kind of out in the clear air, which is what we're kind of seeking um, right here. And then there's other kinds of lift too. There's ridge lift. So if we were to go over by those mountains, there'd be potentially wind that's blowing up the face of the mountain and, and providing some lift there as well. So some future videos, maybe we'll try a, um, maybe we'll try a cross country flight. We'll get towed up to a certain altitude, fly from one um, airport to the other, see if we can make it. I would encourage you to play around with some of these settings and uh, some of these um, uh, different configurations with the airplane, see what you can do. One great challenge is see how long you can stay aloft. Tow yourself up to a certain altitude, call it 6,000 feet, 5,000 feet, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then time yourself and see how long you can stay in the air before you have to go find a place to put it down. Now the last thing we'll talk about today is our pattern entry. So we can see we've got our airport just off to the left of us over here, and we took off on runway 30 uh, right, which is a little dirt strip over there. Um, if you are familiar with airplane traffic patterns, this is going to follow a very similar concept to that. We're going to enter on a left uh, downwind, left a 45 degree left downwind for that runway. So we'll kind of swing wide here and come in try to enter on that. We want to be at about the same altitude uh, as well, a thousand foot pattern. So um, 4,500 is what we were at on the airport. 5,500 is about where we want to be. So we're at 6,000 now. We got about 500 feet to lose, which should work out nicely um, by about the time we get over there um, to the pattern. One last thing I'll show you here as we're approaching this pattern here is um, those uh, spoilers. So in order, if we wanted to kind of spoil some of our lift and get a little bit more aggressive sync rate, we can actually hit the four key or pull our lever. It's going to pull that little lever on the left down. And you can see that to keep the same airspeed, our nose drops significantly. Let's hold that same airspeed. We were flying right around 100. And now check this out. Now we've got a pretty aggressive uh, downward flow on our variometers over there so we're losing our altitude nicely now if we were to get down to where we wanted to be and find we wanted to glide some more we could just select three push that lever forward and pull those uh, spoilers back in and extend our glide some so we can go over here enter our downwind and go attempt a landing be sure to subscribe to the channel down in the description I will have some cool airports for you to glide in um, just to throw a couple out there, KASE and Aspen, Colorado has some nice mountains and great scenery if you want to glide in there. 92 Alpha in, Chil in Chiloe, Tennessee um, is a great little glider port as well, a little grass strip out there. We're in Minden, Tahoe, which is KMEV, so there's a few for you. Um, ultimately, you can go out and fly wherever you like with one of these gliders. Enjoy some, uh, some time out there. We'll do some future glider flights in the, in the future. Go ahead and get acquainted with this. Have some fun with it. Until next time, keep your head in those clouds.